If you're here, chances are that you want to learn web application security, but you don't know where to start. Well, let me tell you that you've come to the right place. I'm a penetration tester who enjoys breaking into my client's infrastructure and web applications. Besides, I train developers on how to write secure code. Part of the training involves showing them what hackers can do and how to prevent them from exploiting security vulnerabilities. I am bringing this knowledge to you so that you can benefit from it as well. In this exhaustive guide, you will not just learn the OWASP top 10, but you will also practice them on hands-on examples from the best vulnerable web applications. On top of that, I've prepared online video tutorials, which will help you follow the hacking process step by step. Once you've covered the OWASP top 10, I will show you where to go next in your hacking journey. So let's start learning right now. What is OWASP Top 10? The OWASP Top 10 is a standard document which consists of the top 10 of the most impactful web application security risks in the world. The Open Web Application Security Project Foundation, OWASP, publishes a version each three years. OWASP collects data from companies which specialize in application security. It also collects data from individuals using industry surveys. All of the results get ranked based on the impact and the prevalence. At last, the top 10 risks are then filtered. OWASP Top 10 doesn't cover all the vulnerabilities, but it's a solid start for security testers, developers, and organizations. You might ask why I chose OWASP Top 10 as a backbone for this guide. First, OWASP is a well-respected community of tens of thousands of members, ranging from information security experts to security-focused developers. It has existed for almost two decades and has produced methodologies, documents, and tools which help build in secure code. For example, the OWASP Z Attack Proxy, or ZAP for short, is a tool which we will use during this training to test for security vulnerabilities. OWASP also organizes great events with high quality subjects and speakers. For you, this means that you are in good hands. Secondly, the OWASP Top 10 covers all the basics you will need to kickstart your career in application security. In fact, each one of the top 10 security risks includes one or many security vulnerabilities. For example, the injection security risk covers all sorts of security vulnerabilities which can lead to injections. So, to summarize, let me say that OWASP Top 10 is solid and efficient if you want to quickly and efficiently learn where application security. You might be wondering, I want to start right away, but what is the best way to learn OWASP Top 10? The answer is simply one word. Practice. Surely you need the theory behind how each security vulnerability works, which I cover in this guide, of course. However, you can't say that you've learned them until you can exploit them. That's why, for most vulnerabilities we will discuss shortly, I've prepared a training tutorial which will help you get your hands dirty with different challenges. So let me give you an idea of the OWASP Top 10 training I've prepared. In this guide, I've included two web applications which cover the OWASP Top 10 security risks. You can download the lab from the link in the description below. Or, if you prefer, I walk you through how to set it up if you want to build it yourself. The web applications are OWASP Boost Shop and OWASP WebCode. They are both mature and well-maintained projects. They are also written in different languages, which will expose you to hacking in different technologies. During this OWASP Top 10 training, we will set up and configure the best web proxies that the hackers use to test for security vulnerabilities, OWASP Zap and Verb Suite. I've also recorded a YouTube playlist as a complement to the blog posts for you to see how I solve the hands-on challenges. So, you literally have all you need to build a solid knowledge of web application hacking. Now that you know what you will expect from this OWASP Top 10 guide, let's get into the meat and potatoes. In this part, I will give you a summary of the OWASP Top 10 security risks. For each one of them, there are links to dedicated posts which detail the theory and help you practice on hands-on challenges. I recommend you bookmark that page in the description below and learn each vulnerability at a time. Once you finish it to the end, 
you will have a solid understanding and will be ready to test the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities on your own. You can even look for security vulnerabilities on bug bounty programs and get paid. Injection Injection is a security risk that you can find on pretty much any target. Basically, it happens when a server-side interpreter processes untrusted user input as part of a command or a query. There are many vulnerabilities which cause injection. Next in the OWASP top 10 list comes broken authentication and session management. Let's first talk about authentication. It's a feature which verifies an identity's claims. For example, when you log in into an application, it uses your username and password to verify that you are indeed who you are claiming to be. Upon authentication, and due to the stateless nature of HTTP, the application provides you with a session representing your identity, which your web browser sends on your subsequent requests. Of course, you need to be able to sign up, log in, reset your password, or enable multi-factor authentication. That's why authentication is hard to implement without making any mistakes. Any flaw in one of those features can lead to broken authentication. We cover this in detail in this video. In the third rank comes sensitive data exposure. If your IT assets disclose data which is not meant to be publicly accessible, they suffer from sensitive data exposure. On the one hand, this data can be at rest, like your databases or files. On the other hand, it can be in transit, especially if you are using unencrypted or weak encryption for your data transmission. Apart from exposing your customers' data, which is really a scandal, you will also get fines for exposing them. Think of the GDPR regulation, where fines can go up to 20 million euros. XML External Entity, or XXE for short, is a flaw in the way XML parsers get configured. Specifically, this vulnerability happens when it's possible for the XML parser to evaluate DTDs and external entities. It allows an attacker to achieve many exploits, like listing directories, reading files from the server, etc. It can even provoke a denial of service. Broken access control happens when the application allows a user to perform unauthorized actions. There are many vulnerabilities which contribute to this risk. For instance, if the developer forgets to validate permissions when dealing with identities, the application becomes vulnerable to Insecure Direct Object Reference, or IDOR for short. Security misconfigurations, as the name suggests, expose vulnerabilities due to weak configurations of an IT asset. It doesn't affect web assets only. Any component which requires a configuration is subject to this vulnerability. This means that network devices, hardware, email services, etc. all can suffer from this vulnerability. But in the context of web applications, you can find things like directory listing enabled, which would allow you to list all files and directories. Or maybe the developer forgot to disable the debug mode allowing you to get more insights on the inner workings of the vulnerable application. Cross-site scripting, or XSS for short, is one of the famous client-side vulnerabilities. It allows an attacker to run arbitrary JavaScript code on the victim's web browser. XSS becomes possible when user input ends up inside a HTML page or a piece of JavaScript code without proper encoding. There are basically three types of XSS. All of them, along with hands-on tutorials, are explained in this video. But to be brief, we have stored cross-site scripting, which happens when the user input gets stored in the application's data store, then retrieved back and rendered in a page without proper encoding. We have reflected cross-site scripting, which happens when user input gets directly returned into the HTML page without proper encoding. And lastly, we have DOM cross-site scripting, which happens when the user input gets inside a JavaScript code. Here it is possible to exploit cross-site scripting even if there is no request made to the server. Next in the OWASP top 10 list comes insecure deserialization. It happens when the developer doesn't check serialized data that a user sends to the application. This is another vulnerability where lack of user input validation can lead to serious security vulnerabilities. It is hard to exploit, but when it works, it can lead to either remote code execution or denial of service. On rank 9 comes components with known vulnerabilities. You might have totally secured your own code, but what about the dependencies you are using? 
Have you checked them or just imported them into your code? There is a high chance that one or more of them are vulnerable. Using components with known vulnerabilities led to many serious breaches in the past and will still cause many breaches to come, unfortunately. For more in-depth knowledge of that, visit this video. And lastly, we have insufficient logging and monitoring. When a hacker infiltrates a network, IT systems will generate traffic which usually doesn't correspond to the normal one. If you can't detect this abnormal behavior as soon as possible, you are essentially giving them enough time to achieve their goal. Logging in and monitoring should be part of your essential security infrastructure because you simply cannot defend what you don't know. If you want to take your skills to the next level, here are some leads you can follow. Read books. Learn other WASP top 10 projects. Learn infrastructure penetration testing. Practice on hacking platforms and CTFs. And finally, you can earn money while hacking ethically. I hope this OWASP Top 10 guide has opened your eyes to see how wonderful the industry of information security is. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you know when a new video is up. Until then, stay curious, learn new things, and go find some bugs.